Now let us add icons to the menu items on our sidebar. I want us to begin by adding this rightward pointing or icon and it is usually called a chevron icon. So let us open our icon pack and then we will start typing chevron and this is the icon we are interested in. So I click on it and I copy the uh, code for that. And then back in our dashboard.html file, I'm going to paste it after the name of the menu item. So we go back to our page and refresh and it is already indicating here. So we'll just repeat it to the other items. So I'll copy this and I'm going to use a short form, a shortcut. Uh, but I recommend you do it manually for each of the items if you're not very familiar with the shortcuts. Okay, so I have basically done the same thing I did to the dashboard element. Now we are going to apply some style to this icon that I added. So I'm going to select all occurrences of this icon and I will give it a class of chevron forward and we're going to use this class later on to start the uh, icon. Okay, so if you refresh, it looks the same on all elements. Now we can start adding the icons to the left of the menu items. The first of them is the dashboard, which has a speedometer as its icon. So let us start searching for speedometer. We get it, we get the code for that and we add it at the beginning of the text on the menu item. And we're going to give it a class of menu icon. Let's go to the next one, which is the posts, uh, which is something like a reader or something like that. Uh, I have already gone through all of these icons, by the way, so I know their names. But typically what you will need to do is you will manually scroll through the icons and then you look for the one that looks like what you want. So you don't have to know the names by heart. So you just look for the one you want. You click on it and you will see the name here so i have just copied the one for a reader outline and we are going to use it against the post menu item and let's not forget to give it a class of menu icon as well okay so that's it for posts the next is topics and uh, for that we are going to use we're going to use grid outline to signify a sort of categorizing because that is what topics represent. So I'm also going to add the class of menu icon to it. The next is users and we're just going to search for users. And then we click on the one that has two uh, users. We paste it against users. And then we copy the menu icon class and apply it to that icon too. The next is rules. And for rules, we are using a sort of clock. So let us, a sort of lock, sorry. So let us search for lock. And we get the code and we paste it against rules. We give it a class also of menu icon. We need permissions. We are, use, we are using a sort of key for permissions. So let's search for key. We copy that. We paste against permissions. And we also give it a class of menu icon. Lastly, we have collections. And for collections, we are using a reader outline just like posts. So I'm just going to copy the one we used for posts and bring it down to collections. 
now if we refresh we see our icons now are aligned against the menu items now before we start the actual uh, sidebar i want us to um, position the layout of these two elements to look like what we have here in the finished project so the sidebar is going to occupy approximately 20 percent of the page and the page content will cover the remaining 80 percent and both of them will be placed side by side the sidebar to the left and the page content to the right now let us look at the html for these components so you remember we did place our sidebar uh, side by side the page content within the page wrapper so i'm going to pick the selector for the page wrapper and i'll go to the very bottom in our admin style and i'll write a a comment to signify that we are writing the styles for the sidebar or rather let me just say admin layout so here we'll paste the selector for page wrapper we'll display it using flex and by default it's going to be displayed in the in the row direction or oh, you know what i'm going to leave this empty for now and let us select let us select the sidebar and the page contents we'll give this one a red border we'll give this one a blue border that way we can see the elements as we are styling them so by default they are block level elements so they are going to be placed vertically with the sidebar on top of the page content so if we give the page wrapper a display of flex it is going to switch and display it now in a row direction i'm going to give our page wrapper a dashed border of red so that we can see it too okay so now the page wrapper covers the entire width but we want the minimum height to be <coughs> to cover the rest of the visible space so we are going to give it a minimum height of about 100 percent minus the height of the header so we are going to say minimum height we use a function available in css called calc and when we do that we can now apply our values and limits using mathematical or arithmetic signs here and it is going to compute it and return the accurate value for us so what i have done here is i have taken the normal height of the entire page from the very top to the very bottom and i have subtracted the 80 pixels that we assigned to the header so that the height that remains is the visible height from the bottom of the nav bar right to the bottom of the page so if we refresh this this is how our page is going to look which is just perfect okay so that's it for the page wrapper the next thing we're going to do let me just remove the border around the page wrapper the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the sidebar occupy approximately uh 20 percent and then the page wrapper will occupy the rest of the 80 percent uh actually to be more specific i'm going to make it 18 percent okay so um the flex basis property is basically the same as the width property it's basically the same as this width but it is advised that when you are using flex we should stick to using only flex related properties so if we added width here it will still be good it will be basically the same thing but since we are displaying the container using flex we should stick to using the flex related properties wherever we can 
and I am making the side by 18% because after testing, I've realized that is the perfect width that we can assign to the sidebar. Now we will also give it a minimum height of 100% and it is going to assume uh, the entire height of the page wrapper, which is why even though we don't have as many items as would be required to cover the entire height, uh, the sidebar still occupies from top to bottom which is the height of the page wrapper. Now on some very big screen like monitors, um, the width, this 18% uh, width is a bit too wide and it will make your website look very weird on those very big screens. So we're going to add a max width property of about 260 pixels. So no matter how wide the screen is, our sidebar is not going to be overstretched. And now we'll give it a background color of this color I prepared in the background. And we can now take out the red border. Let us refresh and see how this looks like. Okay, it's looking good. Uh, obviously the, the content is going to look very weird because the color is blue. We are going to change it when we start styling the sidebar. Now we also need to give our um, page content a width that will cover the rest of the space. So we'll use flex basis and again this is the same as the width. Okay, so out of 100% we are left with 82% after giving the sidebar a flex basis of 18%. So 82% will be the width of the page content. We will give it an overflow in the x direction of even. Okay, this simply means that if there is uh, a lot of content, we shouldn't allow it to scroll um, horizontally. All right, so I can uh, I can also just take out the blue color or uh, the blue border since we can now see that it is covering the rest of the page. So we refresh and our dashboard is gradually coming out to look like what we have on the finished project.